everybody. Welcome to the third keynote this morning. Um, I hope you had a great time, a great night with your colleagues from your Gecko team. And uh, we're welcoming you to the third keynote, uh, talking about distributed teams and lessons learned from a long distance relationship. With me, there's Eredi Cedenodo. Uh, <laughs> my name is Niklas Bay. Oh, not too bad. And, uh, I will hand over to you. Uh, to Greece, because this is an international keynote and we are switching locations. Meanwhile. Okay, thank you very much, Nicholas Bein. Uh, I know my last name is really hard for you to pronounce. It's actually Tsehelidou, but Eleni is fine for everybody. So I would like to welcome you as well, and I would like to make a short introduction of myself and my co speaker, uh, Nicholas. So uh, me and Nicholas, we have one thing in common. Uh, we have both uh, been through this project, Gecko, before. Nicholas was actually the person who had this idea that there could be something like a global uh, competition where people from so many different countries could just compete on their project management, knowledge, skills, competencies and have some fun, uh, know each other, network and solve a case. So, actually, Nicholas is the reason why you are all gathered here today. So, after he started it, then I had the opportunity to organize this event last year, which was the second round of Gecko, and uh, I guess we're both glad to see that this event, Nicholas's baby, um, is growing and it's going on its third year now and we hope that it will be a young crew tradition that will continue for many years to come. Am I right, Nicholas? Yeah, uh, there are many people involved organizing this, so uh, please don't forget all the great teams that we had in the first and the second year. Yeah. And also Elena uh, from the Czech Republic who supported me quite well. Yes. And um, yeah, so we have some experience from, from working in distributed teams. And uh, that's why we will yeah, share our experience and some lessons learned. And we think that it's uh, quite a long distance relationship in many of what you're experiencing right now. So uh, we start with a small comparison. So um, let's start with a couple and a team. Both a couple and a team might have a goal in mind, a small project of their own. Um, sometimes um, they might want to have a baby, okay, maybe that's too much, or like any other thing that they want to do in common, even just maintain the relationship. And on the other hand, there is a team that wants to organize a project, any kind of project, like the project that you are running now, or the projects that you're running at your jobs every day, or any projects that you will run in the future. Um, we will try to compare these two situations and see what we can learn from what is more familiar to us, from friends and family, and maybe even ourselves, which is the couple analogy to our team. We all want to achieve a goal, uh, to be happy and to manage to do whatever we planned and had in our minds so we can cheer up and have fun at the end. The question is, who is going to do that? Nicholas? Yeah, when, for example, when you're working uh, in a team, then you have a group of people that is defined, and um, you have a set, uh, like Eleni already said, some kind of goal, and you bring in different things. So. Either of you has a special skill and I guess during the project you have revealed some of your skills and it might be useful to dive deeper into this thought during this project again to see whether where you can find some competences that you have that contribute to the others and your teamwork which are not brought in yet or which you don't really see because you're used to your skills and competences. And what do team members? They operate with a high degree of interdependence. So you basically all have something to do and have all have to ask for feedback. Uh, you're working on tasks together and uh, you share also the responsibility for some of your th uh, things. 
but you also have some things that you're working on your own. So that makes it quite complicated to agree on several working tasks or what what you want to achieve. And but the goal that you all have is the same, and hopefully there will be some rewards as in this competition there are as well. So the question is, when do this different competences and the problems that you have uh, concerning the communication because the communication is something that you do differently when you have different competences what is or how do you can bring that together in order to generate added value and um, if you see that that's not that different as in the couple right yeah actually uh, we were trying to look up what it is that makes a team. After all, this is something that you're expected to do during this competition, right? What we found looking up a dictionary is that a team is a group of people with all these skills that um, Nicholas just mentioned that turns into something new. So what is this that makes this different and this transition from a group of people to a team? The um, same thing goes for a couple. What is it that makes two random people, a couple, what is it that makes them be something more than a man and a woman or any other combination? Um, so we are trying to explore this and you will see what we found, at least what uh, were the questions that we tried to answer during this trip. So the first thing that we wanted to know is why. Why do you want to have this couple that is in this long distance relationship or why do you need this team that is distributed? Why do you need to make um, all this effort and not just go the, trans the traditional way and just stay uh, where you are, just work with the people that are right next to you and try to experiment in this very weird uh, way. So what I've seen is um, that for example when you have uh, a couple and I see that you can obviously understand that the first column refers to the couple on this slide um, but of course a team could also be together because of love uh, that could be another way sometimes but the truth is that usually um, a team um, gets together a virtual team because they have a very special project they might have a process project that has really unique features and it cannot be organized by people who are at the exact same geographical location. There might be financial restrictions, uh, like uh, money that you need to commute and uh, travel around and hotel rooms and everything else that can be included in this aspect of the project. Um, there might be obligations that take a couple apart, like professional or educational obligations and any other kind of geographical restrictions that make a group of people that wants to work together and become a team uh, have, it, uh, have a very hard time uh, obtaining this. Time restrictions is another thing because all the um, moving around and the traveling really takes a lot of their time and usually it's their personal time, their vacation, their weekends, their nights. But there are really good things why someone, either in a couple or in a team, would like to get into um, a long-distance relationship or a team. For example, Nicholas, why do you think and how did you get inspired of having all these distributed teams? What did you expect these teams to have and why would they be so special? explain but you meet people and everybody is different everybody's unique and everybody brings in uh, a special skill as you can see on the picture on the left side <laughs> and, um, that was that was something that I wanted to combine that I wanted to share make people aware of and the idea is basically that somewhere on this planet there's somebody waiting for you to initiate something and to work together with you on a vision that he um, has as well. And that happens the same as uh, in couples. So there we also say that <laughs> there's somebody waiting for you, hopefully, <laughs> and that you, uh, that you 
fall exactly in love with this person and that there is a big big fit and uh, you don't want to be with, with somebody else so I think there are a lot of things that are in common and when we go to the next slide we can see we can approve or we can use a really technical thing the SWOT analysis mm -hmm. um, that means strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats analysis to identify these four things either of a team or a relationship and of course the strengths are that in a couple hopefully you like each other <laughs> and they want to make each other happy but there are also some threats and weaknesses like it's really hard to to share stuff and share experiences share moments when you're apart so that is something that threatens of course the relationship and it's not that far away from what our team experience is experiencing yeah. um, the, the lost in translation for example that you don't <laughs> understand the language which might have happened in this project as well but also if you feel apart from the team that you might not be as motivated as, as if you are close to a team drinking coffee every morning and sharing jokes um, which is kind of difficult in, in distributed teams right yeah, exactly. Actually, as we mentioned before, um, we need to turn this group of people that has to work together into um, a team. What usually helps in team building and bonding is all those communication parts, like the coffee thing and the example that you mentioned, like seeing the other person face to face, hearing what they have to say, study their face expressions, know what they do when they're not in front of you and when they're working next to you. This is part of the communication that you're absolutely missing when you're working long distance. Um, you do not know what people do when they're not online. You don't know what they do when they're not on camera. Maybe you have never seen their face. Um, you cannot uh, understand always what they mean when they're giving you written texts because you, you cannot uh, get all those signals that you would get when you would see them in person. On the other hand, uh, Nicholas, what we were seeing when we were trying to organize this SWOT uh, table, either for the couple or for the team, especially for the team, was that some of these features were actually hard to locate and to put somewhere in the right box. As you can see, the four boxes like strengths, weaknesses and opportunities and threats. We wanted to think about, for example, different time zones, which is um a difficulty or a weakness that you have to deal with as well, right? And then we were thinking, is that truly really a weakness? And I cannot hear Nicholas, so I will continue. <laughs> no, I'm back again. Oh, okay. So do yeah. you think that being in a different time zone is definitely a weakness for a team? So why is this different to be in different locations? Uh, so the technical part is one thing. Uh, of course, it's it's hard if you have a large time difference, um, especially when you want to make meetings with everybody. But on the other hand, you can see that you can use this as a time at, as an advantage. For example, that somebody's making a night shift but not making a night shift because he's in a different time zone. Yeah. So the 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 most crucial part is that there are some overlapping times, uh, either in the morning or in the late evening, that enable everybody to participate in some meetings that are for everybody. Uh, but of course, then you can use some kind of time shifts. For example, we now have a time difference of two hours, right? Yeah. That's fine for me because it's early in the evening. I think just I one hour for the two of us, Nicholas. Ah, just one hour. Yeah. Okay, then, then that's fine. But we can use this um, if even better if the time difference is larger. But for example, um, I have a girlfriend in Peru and that's a hard <laughs> time difference. Okay. Um, and I eight hours because when she's leaving, uh, for example, she's leaving work, I go to bed or I'm already sleeping. And when I'm getting up, she's uh, also in bed. So that's, that's kind of difficult so to say especially when you want to share some stuff 
yeah, but at least this way you never get bored because when you're tired, then she's in a hurry. So, you know, kind of works sometimes. And also you don't get sick of seeing each other every day and just doing the same things. You cannot have much routine this way. That's, but that's Okay, so you said you couldn't be otherwise. So the question is, how do you resolve this? Because the way I see it, there is a list of things to do. You need to ask questions. You need to use all the available tools. Um, I don't know which tools you are using now during the competition, but there are so many tools today. Uh, most of them are for free that you can use and communicate and work together and collaborate. Um, the, the thing is that there is room for everybody to express their ideas and you just need to talk and talk and talk and sometimes it seems like too much but it's never too much as long as it's organized okay sometimes maybe a little bit um, I don't know do I talk too much Nicholas <laughs> no no but organization is quite well <laughs> yes That's a quite important point and uh, the selection what we've seen for example in the first year of, of Gecko is that the selection of communication channels plays an important role um, so that you that you decide at the beginning of a project of this competition maybe as well well now I'm telling you today but to decide on which communication channels are you active and on, on which not because the important thing is that everybody is up to date on every channel and um, that is quite quite important so the measures on the and the tools you're using are important and can be choosed as well in uh, in a manner that everybody is satisfied with the, with the with the choice because somebody likes for example to to communicate written some people prefer the phone call some people prefer chatting so this is important what you have to uh, deal with in a, in a team and as well in a couple so which is the mode of communication that reaches everybody and that satisfies the certain needs that you that you have. Yeah. Meeting minutes, for example, as well, so that if you're missing something, that you don't feel left out. Yeah. I also wanted to say that um, taking notes and minutes and making sure that you have everything recorded in a way, either written or recorded or whatever suits better, the team that that needs to keep uh, track of what they've agreed and what they've discussed is to be able to organize all the information you need, all the information that has been communicated um, so that it is available to whoever needs it when they need it and this will make your your life much much easier and this is another very important element when you're working in a distributed team plus you might have noticed the, the picture with the two women gossiping we didn't put that there by mistake. There is a reason for that. This is also part of team building. I don't say you need to gossip your, your teammates, but it's okay if you go off limits sometimes and just say something more personal about yourself and open up to your team. This is very important because, as we said, you lack all the other uh, personal um opportunities excuse me opportunities to express in a more personal way with the people you work with so you need to keep that in mind that you have to try a little bit harder this way you can actually form your team and do what you're expected to do so we have some um, we explain now how this can be done the whole communication thing and the first thing that you notice when you're looking at this slide is that we didn't have anything to add when we we're comparing the couple with the team because you actually need to do exactly the same things to follow exactly the same steps and the same recipe and then you get to have a great result so the first thing is that you have to think as we instead of I you need to think as a group. We said that we have a flat and more flexible organization uh, structure, organizational structure in distributed teams compared to what it would be like in a traditional form. So this means that everybody should work for a common goal, to so have the same idea on their mind on what they want to achieve and support each other because they are on the same team. They actually want the same thing. So this is very important. Another thing is setting boundaries. So, well, how is this working in your case, Nicholas? 
well, setting boundaries is an important thing, especially, um, yeah, what if you have, the, the most important thing is trust in a relationship and, as you mentioned before, as well in the team. So, what is, uh, what is what we're going to do? What is the goal? What is everybody or what is anybody not to do what we are expecting from each other so these two things that are are quite close to each other so setting boundaries what do i like what you don't like um is quite important uh to be open and uh, to, to communicate about that and um this is also com uh, important with the expectations so i see that quite closely related because um, when you define your expectations, you also can say what you won't, what you do not want to have. And um, the regular communication, I would add as well, very open and um, yeah, front, front up communication. So you have to express some things, maybe also in a talk, um, that other people would resolve in different situations. So um, this, is, this is kind of hard. But um, the positive thing about that is that you really have to sit down and think about what are the things you want to do, what are the things uh, you want in life, you want with your team, and um, maybe this work in the distributed team forces you somehow to make some of these things, which usually remain implicit, really explicit, and explain them, uh, go through them again and again. And then follow them as well. I would like to add one more thing here, Nicholas. Um, and this is also important um, because of the international uh, character and profile that any distributed relationship, either personal or in a team, has. There are certain cultures, I don't know if this is close to your culture, it might be a little bit in mine, and maybe in other countries it's more or less weak or strong or uh, prominent. Uh, sometimes when something is wrong, when something, when there is something that we cannot do, we do not know how to do it, or we're doing it and it's messed up, it's not working, something is wrong, uh, there is a tendency for us to take the blame, take it personally, and be afraid or ashamed to discuss it openly, to say, you know what, I cannot do this, or I need help to do that, or something is wrong on this point. Being open, as uh, you described, will help the whole team work together because the rest of your teammates are there to support you. They're there to help you because they want the same thing that you do. So be open, be clear. Uh, make sure that everything that you have on your mind, something that you're afraid of, maybe something that is actually a big risk for your project, but nobody else noticed. Don't be ashamed to express it. On the other hand, if you are the person who is on the other side, and he's expecting to hear input and feedback from the rest of your team. Do not be rude to anybody. Do not exclude anybody for being open and really explicit about what they have in their mind. Just accept everything and be open to learning and hearing and um, encourage people to, to express themselves more openly. And we can see... Yeah, sorry. For example, this also builds some trust. So, if you say, "Well, I'm not able to do this," the other the other people will see, "Oh, okay, this person also has some weaknesses that I might join in and support him." And uh, if you are open about your weaknesses, which is a tendency that truly we are more proud of the things we succeed in, but not as much in the things that we aren't succeeding in. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you generate this this space where everybody can uh, can work together and uh, realize that everybody is all, uh, just human beings, we have yeah. our defects, um, <laughs> then, then that creates some kind also of trust and maybe in the virtual team even more because uh, yeah, you, you know what, on which people you can rely on and with, on which you don't, shouldn't. Maybe, yeah, this, is a, this builds up trust. Yeah, and sure. we can see more examples of this here. Like, um, it's actually the same list, we just express it differently in a couple and a team. We often hear in a couple that we have big discussions or fight on what did you mean by that? Which is a big problem when someone is not clear 
about what he means or what he wants. And this is another thing that you need to take in, into account. Be careful, like how to manage ambiguity and what you're expressing or when you're expressing your expectations and so on. You can often hear a girl or a boy who is in this kind of relationship say, and worry about when are you going to be online and who is this girl in this picture on Facebook and why did you check in with her and who is she and I've seen so many pictures of her and is she cute and so on and all this thing has to do with uh, how you uh, discipline yourself which is really really important when you are in this long distance relationship or team the, the other members of, their team, of your team are not in the same office as you are no one can just open the door and check if you're working or see what you're doing if you're on Facebook or if you're chatting or if you're just, I don't know, playing solitaire. Maybe you're too young for that, but whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, the thing is, how, how can the rest of your team know that you're doing what you're supposed to do? That you're faithful, you're not cheating on them, that you're really trying your hard. You need to have really good time management skills and know that you have to deliver this thing by this time. I know this is a hard thing to deal with and do even in everyday life and on traditional projects and traditional teams, but this becomes even more important and crucial in a distributed team. You need to be in control of yourself and try really your best. Plus, and important. Uh, yeah, go on. No, uh, what I wanted to say or what I wanted to add about this, um, this thing that you have to be explicit and this uh, ambiguity of, 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 of states um, is that if you're working in a language that is not your first language, uh -huh. these things increase. So uh, you not only have the usual uh, yeah, ambiguity <laughs> that, you, that are caused by any, any problems and when you're now not seeing the face, this is the second filter so to say and then you're not speaking the same language this is a third filter so all the communication that is flowing there might get into the wrong channel or channel yeah yeah plus one last thing but this is quite obvious to be able to many uh, to maintain any kind of long distance relationship or work in a distributed team you need to be uh really uh aware of uh different uh, online tools and different technology um, things that technology offers so that you can be up to date and make your life easier but I guess this is the most obvious of them all isn't it I think it is yeah okay so the reason why we are saying all this is because sometimes it can be tricky and to make it more clear we're using an example here about what you do and what you learn from all this process and what I've learned from managing a distributed team and what uh, Nicholas learned from doing the same thing and what our experience was so I'm gonna give you an example okay let's say that um, the, the couple that we're discussing about has an anniversary and the guy wants to send a beautiful bouquet with red roses that remind him of his pretty girlfriend. Um, and the only way he can do it is just prepare a package and ask the, the postman to send it to her. So when he actually did what he had on his mind and what he had planned, he ended up with a really, really bad bouquet of flowers that arrived three days later. Uh, it was withered and she didn't like it at all so what happened when the girl told him because this is another important thing she could have just said you know what honey they were great i loved it so as not to make him feel sorry but if she did tell uh, tell him about it so next time our guy is going to be smarter and he's going to improve himself and he will make sure that he will send his flowers with special delivery and this is something that is ongoing and ongoing and it gets improving and improving and further improving the whole process either sending something or doing anything else the same thing happens for a team Nicholas uh, will will you be kind enough to tell us about the PDCA cycle yes uh, yes my computer. <laughs> sorry it's okay. uh, yes of course for the team it is similar or you can uh, 
adapt this again as, uh, as things that we do usually uh, use for management. So you have a plan, you plan something, you do it, uh, then you check whether it worked or not, and then you act on, upon the reaction. So this is quite important uh, in different situations, as Eleni outlined, for example, with the girlfriend and the boyfriend. <laughs> but in a team, it can be also quite important either to identify some mistakes or identify, for example, measures and things that the team is doing, which is maybe occupying time but not giving an output. But on the other hand, as well, in order to identify things that are going great, that are go uh, going according to what you have planned and that are giving the results that you wanted to have. So either in positive or in negative scenarios, um, this method helps you to keep track of the things that are going on and to force you a little bit to check really what are you doing and what are you investing your your um, your time in and in a relationship for example that can be as well so if you're in a dis if you're in a long distance relationship maybe it doesn't work if you call each day half an hour and just say hi or it is better to maybe Skype once a week because then you have both people are relaxed, have preserved their time in order um, to dedicate this time also uh, to the partner. And um, so you, in both scenarios, you can apply that again to the team that might work better. So what is better for the team? Is it better to meet frequently or with time? So that can be decided by each project manager with his team uh, in order to suit the goal that they have and the vision of the project. Yeah, I also think that the PDCA circle can be um, used in really smaller things. Like, for example, you try, you randomly, instead of emailing your teammate, which is what you agreed in the first place, uh, you think of not randomly, but you actually plan it and you say, you know what, this time we're going to try a different tool. I'm going to call you or I'm going to send you an SMS. And you do it and you check then if this worked better or faster than what it did the previous time. So this can help you and next time you will find a faster way and a better way and a more uh, productive way of, of doing things. Not just when you finish your project, which is one thing, like you learn something from what happened and you just plan better the next time. But you can also do it all the time, like every day and every hour, because your project is slightly shorter. So, um, before we close, we would like to give you some hints based on our experience and what we've learned and what we think would help you. And the first thing that I would like to, to give you as advice, as a piece of advice, is to spend some time um, especially at the beginning, but not only, to learn who your teammates are. Uh, even if you're a very, very experienced, smart, talented project manager, and you think that you have this rookie, this 20-year-old who has no idea about anything, and he doesn't know this and this, and he doesn't know what this means or the other thing, and he messes up everything, don't do the mistake of ignoring him and letting him out of your team. Everybody is valuable and everybody can contribute and help the team get better. Even if you have Superman in your team, he will never be able to perform as, as well as many more people that are sharing their skills and competencies and they work together. That's the first thing. The second thing, Nicholas. Yeah, the second thing uh, is that you should know what everybody is doing and how they are doing things and maybe who needs to know about it and if you realize that somebody needs some advice some help that you as a project manager then identifies which who are the resources um, that can contribute with their expertise to the question that pops up so as a project manager in that case you should not only know what your staff is doing but also know what their problems are in order not to help them directly, but to bring together those people that can learn from each other. Yeah, yeah, that's a way of doing some information management, which is really crucial for your success. Um, 
the last thing that I would like to remind you guys is to remember to have some fun. It's not a bad thing. It doesn't make you seem lazy or irresponsible or anything else. If, if you're having fun with what you're doing, first of all, you're enjoying more your project, so you're more into it. And then you're sharing something with the other people around you. And by creating this, these memories, these common things together, these fun moments, you create the, the fun and friendly environment that will help your, your group turn into a real team that works together and they support each other and they produce better results this way. What is important as well, even in a, in a virtual team, you can go to get, uh, you can meet up and what we had in the last year were some virtual shots. So I don't know if you have done any last uh, last evening. Uh, but the thing is that if you do so, so you meet and uh, I don't know, you call up on each other and say like, hey, I'm uh, in a bar. I don't know. I, I have here a glass of wine or beer or coffee, maybe. Um, let's toast and then you get a chit chat and that brings together a team. So create maybe also some some rituals uh, that yeah. you outperform in order to have some fun and yeah. not last but not least get inspired and uh, work hard to get to know the people you're working with um, get to know what their strengths are maybe you can you identify passions in the collaboration with other people that you never thought about and try to admire and try to incorporate the different point of view that of other people so do everything of that but also be responsible and uh, be responsible for yourself and then later on in your team and as a project manager of course you have to be responsible for your team but the most important thing as well in the young crew is get inspired get new ideas and we hope because this idea of gecko was was i don't know an inspiration yeah, for sure catalyzed somehow on a global young crew workshop but I'm sure that each team of you uh, maybe has one or two ideas and I hope that these two I two or three ideas find some people in order to be to found a new tradition which we at the moment don't know but we're <laughs> looking forward to it. Yeah we're looking forward to getting your business culture, your project culture and your rituals. We want you to be part of your teams um, but because you're running out of time, I would like to thank you all for your attention very much. That was all from me, Eleni Tsekhelidou. Thank you very much, Nicholas. Thanks a lot. Uh, I hope they enjoyed the last few hours of Gecko, and I'm looking forward to the results. Good luck to all of you, and we will see you at the finish. See you at the award uh, ceremony. And feel free to contact us, and sorry for taking that long. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye! -bye. Bye.